Morant with a running start. Elevate! Oh, oh, it does! Oh, my goodness! Oh. He's done a tie game in overtime. Gasol will turn his heat. It's gone! It's Gasol top. Seven tenths remain. Only now with three. Count it! A 15-point lead for Memphis. And Blake Griffin gets into it on the floor with Randolph. Hard to tell if there are any punches being thrown under there, but Griffin took exception. Adams going long. Morant! Oh, he hit it! He hit it! He hit it! John Morant! Insanity! You gotta be kidding me. Welcome to Grits and Grinds, a Memphis Grizzlies podcast. My name is Keith Parrish. Of course, I'm releasing this episode now because of the devastating news that just came out for Grizzlies fans that Ja Morant is out for the season. Ja Morant, who was wearing a sling on the sideline, During the Suns game, he missed that game with quote-unquote shoulder soreness. Turns out he will be having shoulder surgery to repair a torn labrum. I said last episode it seemed a little ominous that Taylor Jenkins said there would be more information in the coming days about the Ja Morant injury. And of course, him having his arm in a sling based on shoulder soreness seemed weird. And now we got the awful, devastating news that yes, in fact, John Morant is out for the season. Here is the Grizzlies statement about the injury saying at Saturday's training session, John Morant suffered a subluxation of his right shoulder following ongoing soreness and instability. Morant underwent an MRI that revealed an underlying labral tear. So now we find out John Morant will have shoulder surgery and this somewhat cursed Grizzlies season feels even more cursed. They are missing their superstar, all NBA player, Two-time All-Star John Morant. He finishes the season with nine games played. The Grizzlies went six and three in those games. And now, as Grizzlies fans, we're kind of searching for some answers on what to do now. What's next? Is there any optimism? Is there any hope? Are we supposed to shut it down and tank? And Frankly, in the immediate aftermath, I don't have a lot of answers. What we have right now is a team missing multiple players on its main roster for the rest of the season. No John Morant, no Steven Adams, of course. Whether or not Brandon Clark makes his debut this year, we don't know. He's previously said he's aiming to return to the All-Star break. Brandon, do not probably return this year. This year is a little bit lost. Now, I do know, and I feel pretty confident, that no one's shutting anything down in January. This team still has Jaron Jackson Jr., still has Desmond Bain, still has Marcus Smart. They're not shutting anything down. They're not going to try to tank out. And there is some conversation to be had about the Grizzlies draft standing currently, and they are almost certainly going to end up in the lottery and should get a pretty good pick out of this. But that doesn't mean I don't think that they're going to be doing much active tanking. I think if you look at the tankathon standings right now, the Grizzlies are in sixth, as in they have the sixth worst record. Basically, you're never going to catch the top four. You're not catching the Pistons, Spurs, Wizards, or Hornets, no matter what you do. So the Grizzlies aren't really going to change course or anything, I don't think. Also, what they've been doing so far has got them in this situation. And of course, no strategy as far as long-term team building is changing that much based off this injury. The Grizzlies already We're treating this, I'm assuming, as somewhat of a lost season. The odds were low they were going to make it into the playoffs. And even if they did, the odds were fairly remote 
that they were going to be able to advance to the second round. So any roster moves that were made this season, any trades that were made, were always going to be focused on how can this team get better next season and in the seasons after that. We have been, the organization has been focused, I'm pretty sure, on the 2024-2025 season and beyond. That's a reason why they weren't going to trade, I don't think, draft picks or you know valuable commodities to bring in help for this year. You weren't trading for a short-term fix at center. I said on the show, like I would trade our current players, like I would maybe see what I can get for Luke Kennard and maybe try to turn him into a center, and they might still do that. Like, is Luke Kennard in your long-term plans? That's something I don't know. I would guess not. Right now, we have to figure out what players are in the long-term plans. We know you have Ja, and you have Desmond, and you have Jaron. Is Marcus Smart in your long-term plans? My immediate thought for this injury is, okay, this season is somewhat lost, there still can be positives, like we've we've discovered Vince Williams Jr. this year. That's a big positive for this season. But our goals, our highest aspirations of this team, you know, getting back to the playoffs and having success, that's basically out the window this year. So we have to figure out what the long-term pieces are. And the Marcus Smart part of that, I don't know what the answer is. So because of this injury... I now would probably consider listening to offers on Marcus Smart where I don't think I would have beforehand. I would have probably given a really long runway to see what the team looked like with Ja, with Dez, with Marcus Smart, with Jaron. We got very, very little of that. My immediate impression was it wasn't a perfect fit having John Morant and Desmond Bain and Marcus Smart. But we got so few examples of what it actually was. Like the last time we saw them all play together against the Lakers, the Grizzlies had a season high in points and a season high in field goal percentage, and all of them looked great. I don't know if the front office that made the trade this last offseason for Marcus Smart, did they see enough this season to determine whether or not their thought back then was correct? that, hey, that guy is an important piece and he can be a long-term part of this Grizzlies team. Marcus is 29. He turns 30 this season. He signed for two more years after this one. Is he a part of your long-term plan? Is he a part of the next great Grizzlies team next year? He very well could be. But now that we've lost one of the Marcus Smart years that we had, And the way I think about it is this was going to be the best Marcus Smart year we got just because he's going to get older. And so we're now losing as a team. We're losing our best Marcus Smart year we're going to have because of that now where previously I might want to play the whole year out to see how it looks. Now I would assume they will be a little bit more open to listening to trade offers on Marcus Smart. I know I certainly would. You have some teams that are a little bit desperate who might overpay slightly for Marcus Smart. Of course, if you could go back in time, you wouldn't even trade for Marcus Smart now if you're the Grizzlies. If you knew this season was going to be lost, if you knew John Morant was going to play nine games, there's no way you trade Tyus Jones in two first-round picks to be, to get Marcus Smart. I mean, that Warriors pick right now is in the lottery. You'd rather have that Warriors pick as you build up for the future, I think, than having Marcus Smart. Now, having a good player is actually better than having a draft pick when you're trying to, you know, actually win the ball games. And so because of that, maybe, again, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe my analysis there is wrong. You'd rather have Marcus Smart. But I think right now there are teams that are struggling that want Marcus Smart. There are some teams that might actually pay a lot Maybe some teams that get a little overambitious, like the Sacramento Kings. They might give you multiple future draft assets for Marcus Smart. They have plenty of options for matching salary. They might just want to trade Harrison Barnes in like a pick for Marcus Smart. And now I think the Grizzlies are at a point where you would think pretty hard about that. You're probably going to think about 
can we find a player who maybe fits a little cleaner alongside Ja, Dez, and Jaron? And also, can we pick up maybe a future first-round pick? Like, as long as Ja and Dez and Jaron have been together, they're still super young. They're all under 25. There's no rush to be like, oh, we got to win next year. Each year that passes, like, yeah, I get a little concerned that we're not getting any better. And that's one of my frustrations over the past two seasons of the Grizzlies, where it's like, why are we wasting these golden years? Well, no one meant to waste this year. There was a Ja Morant suspension, and now he's hurt. And there was a Steven Adams injury, and there was a Brandon Clark injury. So now this is the hand we've been dealt. You play it out as in, you're going to play your guys. You're not shutting anything down. Yeah, maybe you'll play Zaire Williams a little bit more and Jake LaRavia a little bit more. And you're going to listen on offers, I would think, for Luke Kennard. Like, again, I don't think Luke Kennard's part of your long-term plan. Luke Kennard is a backup. He's a sub. Those guys are replaceable. The issue is going to be roster building as the Grizzlies go forward. The issue is going to be you're paying so much money to Bain and Ja and to Jaron. What are the avenues you have for adding more players? And it might be it's going to be harder to replace a Marcus Smart or a Luke Kennard because you can't use free agency. You have to make it a trade. So you got to be careful the players you get back and all the matching salaries and all that stuff. But I would think you don't worry too much about like Luke Kennard and you say, does anybody want to give us three second round picks? The three second round picks that we sent out for Luke Kennard, maybe I'll take that and someone who can dribble a basketball. We need an actual point guard. I mean, that's the main, that's one of the main cruel jokes of this John Morant injury. The Grizzlies have no point guards. I mean, they signed Derrick Rose this offseason with their one roster spot. They could have used their full MLE on somebody. They signed Derrick Rose. Derrick Rose is injured. We don't know when he's coming back. He's week to week. The next time he gets healthy, he'll probably play. He'll probably get injured again. Like, maybe you would think a silver lining of a John Moran injury is like, oh, now so-and-so gets way more minutes. Who? There's no young guard we're developing. I mean, the victory of the season so far has been discovering Vince Williams Jr. He's sort of a guard, but he's more like a wing. So I think they need to do something to get somebody in the door who could dribble a little bit more. I mean, I know they beat the Suns on Sunday, a very encouraging win with no Ja Morant. Marcus Smart played well, played a ton of minutes. Luke Kennard started. Vince Williams Jr. played a ton of minutes off the bench. I mean, they can try to do that a little bit, but I think you're going to need a true point guard. And I don't think it's Jacob Gilliard. I mean, Jacob Gilliard's on a two-way spot. He actually started a couple games earlier this year when John Morant was suspended. I wouldn't be surprised if when they find a way to open up a roster spot via a trade to to give Vince Williams Jr. an actual roster spot. If the two-way spot that they open up there, maybe they use that on a point guard or maybe that on a big. But I would think with Jacob Gilliard, you would consider moving on from him to try to find... Maybe another point guard you want to give a go to. I mean, this is something where I show my ignorance of how G League operates because I don't follow the G League very well. Like, how important is it to NBA teams that their G League team be any good? Like, Jacob Gilliard is more important to the hustle. He's a very good G League point guard, but I don't know how much that's helping the Grizzlies right now. Is that helping GG Jackson develop? I mean, maybe. Maybe there's some aspect of that. But I would think, looking at this main roster, looking at the John Morant injury, looking at Derrick Rose's fragility and his struggles staying healthy, I feel like I need another point guard there. Now, other trades you might do for Marcus Smart, like I know the Sixers would probably be interested. The Bucks would be interested. The Lakers would be interested. I don't know what the Bucks or the Lakers you know, could give in that kind of trade. But I would think that's the kind of guy that you might be able to get two future first-round picks for. At least get back what you sent out. I mean, the Grizzlies sent out the 25th pick in last year's draft. It wasn't like a tantalizing, unknown future first. They knew what the pick was. It was the 25th pick. And they traded away that Warriors top four protected pick. But I would think at this point you're thinking, what can we get for 
maybe Luke Kennard. What can we get for Marcus Smart? If you can't get that much, you know, you're fine with keeping him and you're playing it out. But it's all about next year and the year after and the year after that. And it's always been all about that. I don't think they were ever going to make some kind of big trade for this season until they saw what they had, until they saw maybe they had a chance or a good chance of making the play in, and if they thought that move would help them in the coming seasons. Now, with the John Morant injury, you get this disabled player exception that's worth, it's supposed to be like $12.4 million, according to Bobby Marks. With that, you could sign a player who's not on a roster right now. I'm not sure who that player would be that you'd be interested in signing, and you also still need a roster spot. That's still the issue. The Grizzlies still have the disabled player exception for the Steven Adams injury, but they don't have a roster spot. And I don't know, again, what's a free agent out there that you would want to sign with that money? You can trade for a player. My understanding, and my understanding could be wrong, my understanding is it's like a trade exception. You could trade for a player making less than that as long as they are in the last year of their deal. So if the Grizzlies somehow opened up a roster spot, you could trade and get back like a DeLon Wright or Monte Morris or Alec Burks or Taylor Horton Tucker, some of these point guard, combo guard guys that are on not very good teams Maybe you could get one of those guys back, and maybe it wouldn't even cost you anything. Maybe the Wizards would just do DeLon Wright a solid to come back to the Grizzlies. By the way, DeLon Wright, uh, tank commander. The last time uh, the Grizzlies um, tanked out and got Jaron Jackson Jr. Remember DeLon Wright putting up those triple doubles back in the day. Like, maybe the Grizzlies, and again, you'd have to think of some form of trade where you're sending out multiple pieces, which isn't that likely in the NBA, but basically you'd want to identify a team that had an open roster spot that maybe just wanted to take a flyer on Jake LaRavia. Does this injury make it more likely that you keep Jake LaRavia to see if he turns into something? I would say actually, yes, you might still want to do that. I still think sort of giving away John Conchar might be the way to go. Um, I believe the Celtics have an open roster spot. The Warriors have an open roster spot. I think you might be able to give John Conchar to one of those teams. Um, Xavier Tillman is an, is an interesting one. He's having a not very good season. He's basically losing all his playing time to Bismack Biombo. He is on an expiring contract. He's an unrestricted free agent. Maybe you could find a team where you trade... Conchar and Tillman, they send back basically a player they don't want who's an expiring salary, and you can go ahead and waive them. That there would open up two roster spots. Like, you don't mind the dead money of trading for someone who whose contract is expiring. Like, you've already sort of spent that money. You just don't want the dead money on the books for next year. That's another, I guess, bad part about the Derrick Rose signing. Like, it all makes sense, or it seems so easy to create a roster spot to just waive Derrick Rose. And maybe they would, but... I don't know. I've been told they're not going to waive Derrick Rose. They value him organizationally being here. I mean, fine. Also, he has money for next year. Like, I think the ideal roster clearing move is sending Conchar somewhere, maybe sending Tillman somewhere, getting back a just any kind of contract where you could just waive that. Then maybe. You add Vince Williams Jr. to the regular roster so he can continue playing the rest of the season. And then at that point, if you wanted to make some kind of trade to bring in like Alec Burks or something, I mean, Alec Burks might, I don't know, he's been bad this year kind of for the Pistons too, but maybe his market is cooled and you can just get him for nothing. You could send the Pistons some cash or a lightly protected second round pick and get him. And then you're bringing in a guy just to help handle the load a little bit. Um, But again, you're not going to trade much because you're not going to commit any kind of draft picks for this season. But you're also, again, I don't think you're pulling the plug. You're not bottoming out. I don't think that's something you would do to Jaron and something you would do to Desmond. And frankly, like I said at the beginning, you don't have to do much to stay in that range they are currently with like the sixth to ninth worst record. That's kind of the sweet spot. You're not catching the worst teams, but if you stay between six and nine in the tankathon standings, you have, you know, around a 20% at worst case, you have a 20% chance of jumping up into the top four. And also you're helped because there's other teams in that 
zone right now who do not control their own pick and desperately want to not be there like the Raptors and the Nets and the Warriors. Like these teams are going to try to win the Rockets. Like the, all these teams are giving up their first round picks. So they don't want to be there. So like you can play Jaron and you can play Marcus and you can play all your best players and you could try to win and you're going to win. Like you're not going to be as bad as you were at the beginning of the year. That was flukish. I think you're going to end up, you know, going roughly 500, maybe a few games under 500, um, as long as Marcus and Jaron and Desmond are all healthy. And that's going to keep you, you're not going to gain ground, really. It's going to keep you basically right where you are, I think. So for that reason, just for competitive reasons, like it's hard to get better, I think, if you tank out. Like these are, these are professional athletes that are competitive that want to win the games. The coaches want to win the games. The fans, we want them to win the games. So I, I think they're going to keep being competitive. They're going to keep trying hard. It just, it is what it is. It is a gap year. And hopefully next season, John Morant's fine. Steven Adams is fine. Brandon Clark is fine. And then you ended up with a top 10 pick who in another circumstance, you wouldn't have gotten. And so maybe that is the blessing in disguise, that you end up with another really good player. You get to add Gigi Jackson in. We're hoping he's going to have a great year as he does well in the G League right now. But like any of this stuff about trading your pick for a player who can help now or trading young guys because like you want to bring in veterans, like we're not there yet. And saying we have too many young guys, we don't want to draft the guy next year. No, that's false. Jaron is young. Desmond is young. Ja is young. It's fine to refresh it, especially with someone high in the lottery. I absolutely want to add a lottery pick to this team next year, and maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe that player will be the perfect running mate for Ja Morant. We'll fit in perfectly alongside Desmond Bain and Jaron Jackson Jr., and this Grizzlies team can reach the heights that they thought they were going to get to. But anyways... That's all I guess for today. It's just a sad moment. I mean, we lose one of the spectacular athletes of the NBA, one of the most fun guys to watch play basketball. The Grizzlies season, I mean, it's kind of ruined. It's basically ruined. Like, this is what you, this is, if you're like me, like, you spend your time, your life, looking forward to basketball games, looking forward to basketball seasons, and to have one of those taken away when your best player is hurt, it's an awful feeling. So all of you out there who are feeling awful like I am, I'm sorry. Um, we will get to this together. Um, we can remember, I guess, just the fun couple of moments we got from Ja this season. The buzzer beater against the Pelicans in his first game back. Had that great dunk on Victor Wimbanyama. He sh showed us the flashes. And then we got to see the Grizzlies play at the peak of their powers, probably against the Lakers in that awesome game when the big four, Ja, Jaron, and Dez, and Marcus all played super well together. And now the rest of the year, we'll focus on can Zaire keep taking tiny steps forward? Does Vince Williams Jr. continue to look like the answer on the wing? Can Desmond and Jaron handle this higher usage? And uh, who are the long-term pieces? Which guys are sticking around? Is it Marcus Smart? Is it Luke Kennard? Is it uh, anybody else on the roster? Anyways, thanks, you guys, for listening. Sorry we have to do this, but as always, I appreciate you listening to the show and supporting it. Talk to you soon. Go Grizz.